neighborhood Chevron gas station invites you to... Let George do it. Brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Motor Oil. George Valentine has been out of uniform only a few weeks. Blessed with an abundance of energy and adventuresome spirit and not too much money, he has sunk his last dime in office rent, a few pieces of furniture, and an ad in the classified section of the daily paper. An ad which reads, Do you have a crime that needs solving? Do you have a dog that needs walking? Do you have a wife that needs spanking? Let George do it. Now three days have passed, and George, sitting in his swivel chair with his feet up on the desk, is still anxiously waiting for a client. Suddenly, the door bursts open. Mr. Valentine? Yes? Mr. George Valentine? Yes, yes. Come right in. Have a seat. Oh, here, take this one. It's softer. Oh, thank you. Oh, don't mention it. Have a cigar? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. You're too young. Here, wait a minute. Here. Have a chocolate bar with almonds. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Now then, what can I do for you? Well, I came to work for you. Work? I thought you were a client. Oh, no, sir. That's all right. I'll get it. Hey, hey wait a minute. Good morning. Let George do it. How do you like that? Oh, I can make an appointment for you. I'm Mr. Valentine's confidential assistant. Well, that's nice to know. Oh, well, if you're that close, then come right up, Mr. Winters. Yeah, goodbye, sir. Well, how do you... Now, look here, bottom button. I'm Sonny Brooks. You can call me Sonny. Well, now, look here, Sonny. Who hired you? I come with the office. You see, Caleb, the elevator man, is my friend. He knew I was looking for a job, so he said, Sonny, whoever gets that office gets you, too. Yeah, well, you're too young, Sonny. Things may get a little rough around here. Oh, that's okay, sir. I'm a very rugged character. Now then, Mr. Winters will be here soon. Winters? The mystery writer? Yes, sir. Jonathan Winters. He just phoned. Oh. We can discuss my salary later. I'll go on the payroll as of today. Uh-huh. Whether I like it or not, huh? I have a feeling you're going to become very fond of me, sir. I grow on people. Yeah, like a wart. All right, Sonny, call an employment agency and get me a secretary. Well, that won't be necessary, sir. Why? Don't tell me you type also. No, but my sister does. Your sister? Claire. She'll be here soon to start to work. Well, say, does your whole family go with this office? Oh, well, I don't have much of a family. There's just Claire and me. Oh, well, that's tough, kid. But you're lucky. I haven't even got a sister. (laughs) Tell you what, maybe we can sort of look after each other. How about it? Oh, that'll be swell, Mr. Valentine. I'll be glad to take care of you, sir. (laughs) Hey, you're okay, Sonny. Oh, you like Claire, too. She's prettier than I am. Oh, perfect. It doesn't matter if she can type or take dictation just so she's prettier than you are. Mr. Valentine? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, Mr. Winters. Come right in. Mr. Valentine, I'm here because... Well, it doesn't matter what the job is, Mr. Winters. I'm your man. Just throw your problem in my lap and I'll come up with the right answer. Mr. Valentine, I... I'm about to be murdered. Well, now, don't take it too seriously. A lot of people... Murdered? Murdered? You're... You're joking, I hope. I'm not joking. Oh, well... uh, Well, that's uh, a little out of my line, Mr. Winters. I mean... uh, Mr. Valentine, I... I... I have been murdered. Oh, Suffering cash. Yeah, well, 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 don't stand there, Sonny. D- do something. Call somebody. D- d- the police. The fire department. Yeah, I'll get a doctor. And Sonny. Yeah, Mr. Valentine? Don't get excited. Look at me. I'm perfectly calm. You going up, miss? Is Mr. Valentine's office in this building? Fifth floor, step in. Oh, thank you. Ah. Yeah. You're, uh, you're Claire, ain't you? Well, how did you know? Family mean? resemblance. You look like Sonny. Nice boy, Sonny. I think so, too. Of course, I'm prejudiced. You know what sisters are like. Yes. I'm the same way about Georgie. Georgie? Oh, you don't mean Mr. Valentine. Of course I do. Known him for years. Used to work for his father. Georgie and I got to be good friends on account of his curls. Curls? Yeah, must have been all of four years old then. Had the prettiest long curds you ever did see. Oh, really? Yes, I talked to his mom to having them cut off. Georgie and me's been close friends ever since. I can understand that. You, uh, <clears throat> gonna work for him? Well, I'm gonna apply for the job. Uh-huh. Well, you keep an eye on him, hear me? Well, I don't... That boy never thinks to eat unless someone reminds him. 
Oh, here we are, fifth floor. Oh, don't let his talk fool you. Tries to act hard-boiled, but I know Georgie. Underneath it all, he's still a little boy with them pretty long curls. First door to your left. Oh, there he is now. Caleb, 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 get a doctor up here right away. I ear, nose, or stomach? I, uh, I don't care. Get a doctor. I'll get Dr. Mac. He took very good care of you when you had that bad cold. Mr. Valentine. Well... Is anything wrong? Oh, no, no, nothing trifling. Now, uh, run along, sweetheart, and if you're a client, come back tomorrow, will you? I'm Claire Brooks, Sonny's sister. Yeah, well, come back tomorrow. Mr. Valentine. Well? You're going to talk to me about that job whether you like it or not. I spent ten cents on bus fare to come here. Well, look, here's a dime. Now be a good girl and beat it. I certainly will. I wouldn't work for you if you offered me a thousand dollars a week to sit behind a desk and do nothing but powder my nose. Well, I could stand a little powder at that. Oh, you... Oh, wait a minute. You had any experience as a secretary? Of course. Can you mend socks? Mend socks? Iron shirts, sew buttons, cook breakfast over a can of sterno? Mr. Valentine, are you looking for a secretary or a wife? Oh, a secretary. I'm still a bachelor, knock on wood. Had one close call, though, but I got away from her. <laughs> Lucky guy. <laughs> Lucky girl. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're all right. Okay, you're hired. Thank you. Now, give me back that dime. What about salary? Oh, uh, salary. Well, uh, we'll discuss that after I collect from my first client. How do I know you'll ever get a first client? My first client? Oh, I've got one now. I don't know what I'm going to do with him, but I've got him. Come on in and see for yourself. That gentleman stretched out on the floor is my... What? What? Sonny! Sonny! Yeah, Mr. Valentine? Well, where is he? Where's the body? Where's Mr. Winters? Suffering cats, Mr. Valentine. He's gone. (laughs) Now, make sense, will you? Mr. Winters couldn't have just disappeared into thin air. Well, that's like I told you, Mr. Valentine. I went into the waiting room to phone the police, and the next thing I knew, you were out here yelling for me. Look, this window is open. Oh, what of it? Well, don't you see? It leads to the fire escape. Mm Mm-hmm. And this door leads to a closet, and that door leads to the... Well, never mind. Will you be serious? Mr. Winters was shot. Well? Maybe his murderer followed him here to your office. Maybe he hid out of the fire escape listening. Then when you left the office, he dragged the body out. I'll bet sis is right. Oh, look, kids, we haven't got time to puzzle over it now. I'm in a jam. The police will be here any minute. The police? Well, of course. Sonny phoned them. Gosh, I'll look pretty silly trying to explain that the body disappeared. My first case, and I make a mess of it. Oh, don't get discouraged, Mr. Valentine. Yeah, but to tell you the truth, Sonny, I don't know what to do next. I haven't even got a clue. (laughs) Still the little boy in curls. Curls? Oh, Caleb's been talking to you, huh? He's a swell guy, but don't take him too seriously. Why not? Well, because he thinks I know all the answers. And look at me. Mr. Valentine, why don't you go out and find a clue? Find one? Where? Well, did Mr. Winters have a family? Well, I don't... Hey, wait a minute. I've seen pictures of his wife in society papers. Good. Oh, Claire, you're wonderful. Remind me to raise your salary. What salary? Yeah, well, when you get one, remind me to raise it. See you later. Where are you going, Mr. Valentine? To Mr. Winter's home. And when the police come, stall them. But, Mr. Valentine, what'll I tell them? Tell them nothing. You've got charm, haven't you? Well, use it. Mr. Valentine, I've got to know. What do you think happened to my husband? Oh, no, just take it easy, Mrs. Winters. I was afraid something would happen to him. Why? Well, he he was so worried. I thought it was because his writing wasn't going too well. He hadn't been able to write a thing in a long time. Uh Uh-huh. Your husband is the famous mystery writer, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, I've read some of his stuff. The case of the body in the bathtub. Murder has the hiccups. This is his study. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. Say, quite a layout. Uh, what are all these papers? His manuscript. He was working on The Lost Corpse. The Lost Corpse? <laughs> Cute title. It wasn't coming easy. He knew it had to be good or it would mean the end. Mr. Valentine, what are you looking for in that waste paper basket? Well, I I don't know exactly. I just got a hunch. I want the truth. Was he murdered? Oh, relax, Mrs. Winters. Relax. The best man in town is on the job. Who? Who? I mean, of course. Uh, is this the lost course? Uh, put that manuscript down. Don't look at it. Why not? Uh, well, sorry. It's, it's just a superstition. Jonathan never wanted anyone to read what he was working on. Oh. Then, of course, you haven't read this. Uh, no. No, no, certainly not. Did your husband have any domestic trouble? 
Domestic trouble. Jonathan was devoted to me. Was? Why the past tense? What? Well, I... I, I don't know what I'm saying. Miss Winters? Yes? Yes, what is it? There's a policeman downstairs. He wants to talk to you. A policeman? Well, I'll be right down. Look, Mrs. Winters, you haven't seen me, understand? But why? Your husband trusted me. Why don't you try it? All right, Mr. Valentine. Any way I can get out of here without going down the stairs? Oh, that door leads to my husband's private elevator. It'll take you to the back entrance. Say, he thought of everything. Well, he liked to come and go without disturbing the rest of the household. <laughs> a clever man. Okay, Mrs. Winters, I'll get in touch with you tomorrow. Tomorrow? You mean you'll have news for me? Well, maybe it'll be news to you. And then again, Mrs. Winters, maybe it won't. <laughs> Valentine, what's the idea of dragging me out here in the middle of the night? Keep your pretty little mouth shut, will you, Claire? Oh, what is this place, anyway? The back entrance to the winter's home. Haven't they got a front entrance? <laughs> sure they have, but we're not using it. We're here to steal something. Steal? I'm supposed to be a secretary, not a second-story man. Shh, keep quiet. Mr. Valentine, I quit. Yeah, some other time. Now step into that elevator. An elevator? Where will this thing take us? Up to Mr. Winter's workroom pitch black in here. I don't feel safe. I'm here. That's what I mean. Shh. Now keep quiet. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, you don't have to hold my hand. I'm not holding your hand. Well, someone is. Well, don't scream. I got him covered. Put him up, you. Hey, get that gun out of my ribs. Sonny. Sonny, I told you to go home. Well, I have a feeling you're going to be very glad I'm along, Mr. Valentine. You might need me. Yeah. Like I need a second head. You could use two. Now, both of you stay right here. I know where the desk is. What do you want in there? Well, I've got to get the lost corpse. The lost corpse? You mean you think Mr. Winter's body's in there? Yeah, it's probably... No, no, the manuscript of his book. Now, keep quiet. Don't make a sound. Oh! Mr. Valentine. Oh, what was that? Oh, just an old shin of mine. Hey, I hear somebody coming up the stairs. Okay, kids, we can beat it now. Everything's under control. I've got the lost corpse. Is it a good story, Mr. Valentine? Mm -hmm. Aren't you going to let us read it? Mrs. Winters wouldn't approve. Oh. What's she like? Is she attractive? Never mind, Mrs. Winters. What about the lost corpse? Well, it's, uh, it's a very unusual story. About a man and his wife. How original. <laughs> yeah, the wife would like to give him the gate, but she hasn't any money of her own. However, she stands to collect a lot if her husband ever kicks the bucket. Is there a murder? Of course. The husband is shot, but he manages to make his way to a private investigator's office. Huh? Is that in the story? Sure. Yeah, but that's what Mr. Winters did. The husband tells the investigator he's about to be murdered. Hey, that's what he told you. Then he collapses. When the investigator steps out of his office, the wounded man disappears. Just like Mr. Winters did. That's what actually happened. It is? Well, what do you know about that? Well, go on, Mr. Valentine. Then what? <laughs> well, later the guy returns to his wife and he says, You thought you killed me, but I'm not dead yet. You, you... Yes. Go on. Well, that's all. That's as far as Mr. Winters got with his story. No wonder Mrs. Winters didn't want you to read it. It's the story of their life. It shows she's guilty. She killed her husband. Georgie. Oh, I say, Georgie. Yeah, Caleb, what do you want? Uh, where's Mrs. Winters? She all right now? Mrs. Winters? What are you talking about? I left her in your waiting room. She come to see you. When was this? A few minutes ago. She acted kind of funny, like maybe she was sick or something. Come on. Not a sign of her. Kayla, are you sure you left Mrs. Winters here in my waiting room? Well... Mr. Valentine, look, on the table. A woman's purse. With initials on it, M.W. M.W., Marcia Winters. Do you think the same thing happened to her, Mr. Valentine? Someone followed her here and hid out on the fire escape? No, no, I don't think so. She heard us talking. She knew we thought she was guilty. Oh, of course. Yeah, all right, Caleb, thanks a lot. Well, it's all right, Georgie. Call me if you need any help. Yeah, yeah, sure, Caleb. Say, how are you two at playing games? Games? At a time like this? Uh, Sonny, you be Sonny. I'll be George Valentine. And Claire, you be Mr. Winters. What? Now, Claire, step outside the office. Uh, give us a few minutes, then come in and say you expect to be murdered. I get it. You want to reenact the crime. <laughs> Smart boy. Okay, Claire, get going. First, I'm a second-story man, and now I'm an actress. I quit. Oh, come on. Claire, be a good sport. Humor me. I said I quit. Yeah, well, we haven't got time now. You can quit tomorrow. 
Oh, all right. But you can think of the silliest thing. <laughs> now what do we do, Mr. Valentine? Just exactly what we did when Mr. Winters first stepped into this office. Okay, Claire, come on in. I don't think she heard you. All right, Claire, we're ready. What's the matter with her? I'll get her. Claire, you can come in now. Claire, what? Where is she? Suffering cats. What a mess. Now my sister's disappeared. It's only natural, I guess, for the carpenter to build his own house a little stronger, for the cobbler to cut his own shoes a little more generously, for the farmer to select the juiciest apples for his own barrel. Frankly, that's one reason why you can count on a little something extra in the way of service when you stop at a home-owned Chevron gas station. You see, the Chevron dealer is building his own business. He's got a big stake in making you want to trade with him. That's why his smile's a little friendlier and his service a little more thorough. And, of course, he's offering your car the best climate-tailored Chevron Supreme gasoline and RPM compounded motor oil. It's only natural, too, for you to like doing business with a neighborly, conscientious kind of a fellow. So look up the Chevron dealer in your neighborhood. Remember, his Chevron gas station is home-owned. doesn't seem to have gotten very far in his solution of this case. First, a murdered man disappeared from right under his nose. Then the murdered man's wife mysteriously departed. And now his secretary has vanished into thin air. Are you just going to sit here in your office, Mr. Valentine? Aren't you going to do anything? She's my sister. She's the only sister I've got. Now, now, take it easy, Sonny. If I thought anything had happened to Claire, I'd be out searching every house in this town. Well, then where is she? Well, she couldn't take it, that's all. So she quit. Walked out on us. I can't say I blame her. That doesn't sound like Claire. Oh, Georgie. Yeah, Caleb. Well, you haven't had your dinner yet. Don't you think you better go out and get yourself something to eat? Oh, not now, Caleb. Oh, well, you could leave by the fire escape. The fire escape? Uh-huh. Police car just stopped in front. Oh, suffering cats, the police. Get yourself a nice steak. Yeah, that's just what I'll do. Come on, Sonny. Now, uh, get down there and stall them, Caleb. Oh, I intend to. Now, you take your time and digest your dinner good. You hear me? Oh, sure, sure. Let's go, Sonny. The fire escape. Oh, and Sonny. Yeah, Mr. Valentine? Better bring Mrs. Winter's purse along with you. Excuse me, Mr. Valentine, but aren't you going to stop and get something to eat? That's the trouble with women. As soon as the going gets a little tough, they walk out on you. Didn't you promise Caleb you'd get yourself a steak? Boy, a big, beautiful steak. But you're certainly right, Sonny. She is. She is, sir? Much prettier than you. Mr. Valentine, if we're not going to eat, we can't just drive around all night. We've got to find out who murdered Mr. Winters and what they did with his body and where Mrs. Winters disappeared to and what happened to Claire. Isn't that right, sir? And she's very intelligent. That is, for a woman. Mr. Valentine. Hmm? Oh, okay, Sonny. Look at the address on that letter. What letter, sir? The one in Mrs. Winter's purse. Is there a letter in here? Well, didn't you notice it when Claire opened the purse? No, sir. Oh, oh, here it is. It's addressed to Mrs. Marcia Winters, 300 Pepper Tree Lane, Cedarhurst. Hey, that's in the country. Yeah, they must have a country place, too. Cedarhurst. Yeah, that's out on Highway 6, right near... Hey, we're on Highway 6. We're headed towards Cedarhurst now. <laughs> Oh, brilliant deduction, Sonny. I'll increase your ration of bubble gum. <laughs> oh, I filled her up, sir. Oil, water. No, thanks. Uh, wash your windshield. No, don't bother. I washed it once and couldn't do a thing with it. Don't get many customers around here at night. Pretty deserted road. Oh, that's so? I'll bet we're the first car you've seen this evening. That's right. Oh, uh, except for that cab. Cab with a woman in it? Uh, uh, now, how'd you guess? Hey, I'll bet it was Mrs. Winters. Hang on, Sonny. We're getting warm. Did 
this it, Mr. Valentine? Yeah, now, careful. Don't make any noise. There's a light inside the cabin. Uh Uh-huh. And a woman. See her moving around? Oh, yeah. I can make out her shadow now. All right, Sonny, you stay out here. Oh, Mr. Valentine. Sorry, Sonny, but there may be trouble, and I can't let anything happen to you. Yeah, but I'm in this with you. Don't you remember? I was going to look out for you. Yeah, but you may need me jeepers, Mr. Valentine. All right, Sonny, you win. But stick close to me, understand? Yes, sir. Are we going to just walk right in? No, no, of course not. That's no fun. What would they do in a mystery show? They'd climb in a window. (laughs) Then we'll climb in a window. Mr. Valentine, she turned off the light. Uh, Shall I go in first? No. Are you getting back of me? Let me handle this. Yes, sir. Take it easy, Sonny. Well, I'm okay. Oh! I've got her. Let go! No, you don't. You'll stay right here. You're hurting Turn me. Turn the light on, Sonny. Yes, sir. Let's see what we've bagged. Claire! Well, well, well. If it isn't second story, Clarissa. Did you have to be so rough? I'll bet you cracked two ribs. Sorry, I don't know my own strength. Well, now that you see who I am, you don't have to keep on holding me. No, but it's fun. Claire, what are you doing here? Oh, well, she saw the address on the letter, so she decided to follow the clue. Yeah, but why didn't she let us in on it? Because she thought I was a dope, Sonny, so she took over. You know all the answers, don't you? Not quite. What happened when you got here? Nothing. The place looked deserted. I crawled in the window, too. No one here? I couldn't see anyone. Are you sure? Of course. Well, I've had the strangest feeling. Yeah? As though someone's been watching me. Uh Uh-huh. Um, stay here with Sonny. I'll, uh, have a look around. Suffering catfish, you sure had me scared. I'm sorry, Sonny, but Mr. Valentine didn't seem to be making any effort to solve the case. Yeah, don't kid yourself. He just keeps things to himself. Well, everything seems to be in apple pie order. Hey, listen. Uh Uh-oh, Sonny, Claire, stand back there in the corner. I'll cover the door. Oh, be careful, Mr. Valentine. Do I detect concern in your voice? Well... I don't want to see you get shot right in front of me. Oh, then close your eyes. Well, good evening, Mrs. Winters. Oh. May I present my two assistants, Claire and Sonny Brooks? How did you know I'd be here? What do you want? Just want to make talk. Mr. Valentine, you've got to believe me. I'm not like the woman in his story. I love Jonathan. Uh Uh-huh. And you're the girl who never reads his manuscripts until they're finished. Well, I... (laughs) Oh, go ahead and turn me over to the police. I don't care what happens anymore. That's as good as a confession, Mr. Valentine. Well, I'm in no mood for confessions. Come on, we're going to play a little game. Oh, not again. (laughs) Hey, Sonny, you keep your eye on Mrs. Winters. Don't let her leave. Don't worry, I won't try to run away. All right, Claire, you're the wife in the lost corpse. More acting? I quit. Yeah, tomorrow. Now then, I'll be the husband in Mr. Winters' story. And uh, here are some lines for you to read, Claire. You came all prepared, didn't you? Is this stuff that you wrote, Mr. Valentine? Well, of course. I'm a man of many talents. Uh, Now then, let's see. Oh, we'll skip to the part where I walk in, wounded, and say, uh, you thought you'd kill me, but I'm not dead yet. All set? All right, let's go. You thought you'd kill me, but I'm not dead yet. No, no. I didn't shoot you. I swear I didn't. But who'll believe you? The police? All clues point to you. Do you mean... Yes, my dear. You wanted me out of the way. Well, you got your wish. I shot myself. No, no. I killed myself, but they'll think you're guilty. You'll pay for it. I'll get a doctor. Too late. Too late. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Then I die. What a performance. I don't get it, Mr. Valentine. (laughs) You wrote this ending for his story. Is that it? Sure, of course. What's a story without an ending? I'll tell you what Mr. Valentine is getting at. He's trying to prove that my husband shot himself. Shot himself in such a way that it would look as though I murdered him. Why would Jonathan do such a thing? He knew I loved him. You don't have to put on an act for us, Mrs. Winters. Yeah, why don't you turn her over to the police? Now, just keep your shirt on, Sonny. And everybody stand where you are. Don't make a move. Understand? What are you going to do? You'll see. Mr. Valentine, why are you opening that door? We're going to have some company. Company? Company? Then somebody is hiding here. Okay, you can come on now. Who are you calling? Hey, you mean the police are here? The police? You've set a trap for me. Come on out, Mr. Winters. Huh? Mr. Winters? How did you know I was hiding in there? Jonathan. (laughs) Well, how'd you like my way of ending your story, Mr. Winters? Oh, I was very clever, Mr. Valentine. Jonathan, you're not hurt. You weren't shot. I'm terribly sorry you were worried, darling. 
Yeah, I don't get this. Well, Mr. Winters couldn't find an ending for his story, The Lost Corpse. But how did you know that? Searched his waste paper basket, found it full of rejected That's endings. That's quite right. Finally, I decided to do just what the hero in my book did. So I went to Mr. Valentine. You see, I saw his ad in the paper. Said he could solve anything. Then when he tried to go home and explain to you, Mrs. Winters, he saw the police there. So he came out here to hide. Right, Mr. Winters? Uh, absolutely right. I knew I'd find him here. Then when I searched this cabin, I saw him hiding in the closet. Why didn't you say something? Oh, uh, I wanted to sort of put on a show for him. Oh, Jonathan. Oh, forgive me, darling. <laughs> oh, come on, kids. They don't need an audience. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Valentine. Uh, I've got the ending to my story, thanks to you. And with all that publicity in the papers, it's sure to have a big sale. So, uh... Name your fee. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know, Mr. Winters. I... <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it. I... Saying even a thousand. A thousand dollars? A th oh, a thousand? Oh, I'll send you a check in the morning. Oh, no <laughs> hurry, no hurry, no hurry. I... I just happened to have a pen and a blank check with me, though. As a matter of fact, here it is all made out. Just needs your signature, Mr. Winters. Huh? <laughs> oh, yes, well, certainly, of course. Yes. <laughs> Cats, a thousand bucks. Hey, there you are. Oh, thanks, thanks. Well, let's go, kids. Good night, Mr. Winters. And uh, if you ever get stuck again... I'll remember. <laughs> Good night. Oh, <sighs> what a day. Now I feel like collapsing. Sonny, come here and put your arm around me. Oh, sure, sis. Go away, Sonny. <laughs> Let George do it. Your neighborhood Chevron dealer asked me to pass along this touring tip to you folks taking weekend trips this fall. He wants me to remind you that a Chevron credit card makes a mighty handy traveling companion. If you don't have one, you can apply at any Chevron gas station. If you do have one and haven't been using it, don't forget these credit card advantages. First, they help conserve your travel cash. You can charge most of your car expenses. Second, they're good everywhere in the U.S. and Canada, too. Third, they wrap up all car expenses into one convenient monthly bundle. Chevron credit cards are good at home-owned Chevron gas stations all over the West. So watch for those cream green and burgundy stations on the road this weekend. And use your Chevron credit card. Well, next week, a former army buddy comes to George Valentine with a very delicate problem. George, I'm desperate. You're my only bet. You're the only one who can help me. Now, relax, Tommy. You came to the right man. What can I do for well, you? Well, I've got to go out of town to look for a job, and what I want to know is, in case I don't get back in time, will you have my baby for me? Chevron gas stations all through the West invite you to be with us again next week for another chapter of Let George Do It, brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Motor Oil. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George, with Francis Robinson as Claire and Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, is written by Pauline Hopkins, produced and directed by Owen Vinson. Others in the cast were Joe Kearns as Caleb, Rena Craig as Mrs. Winters, Howard McNear as Mr. Winters, and Horace Murphy as the filling station attendant. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dant. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to... Let George do it! This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>